Hello everyone, it's Wednesday, the sixth week of Easter. Today is the day uh, in the week devoted to St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. So we can learn from St. Joseph. I know the students of Corpus Christi will uh, perhaps be watching this part uh, before the mass starts. We can learn from St. Joseph the importance of and the need for silence. Uh, this is hard for a lot of people today. Uh, silence here is not so much the absence of speech, you know, because we could be saying nothing but be plugged into all sorts of, you know, our gadgets and machines. Uh, so it's not so much the absence of speech, so much as an interior quieting of the heart and the mind, so that we can focus on God and the tasks we have to perform. Um, because if our, if our mind is constantly, you know, going uh, racing with all sorts of noise that we've subjected ourselves to, it's very hard for us to focus, to study, to do homework, for me to write a sermon, uh, to fill out marriage papers, uh, all sorts of things that we need focus and concentration for. But also it can make us very superficial. We have noise, noise, noise going on inside of us all the time. So St. Joseph can teach us no word of his is purposefully recorded in sacred scripture. That's the Holy Spirit's doing. Joseph obviously said a lot of things in his lifetime, but not one word is recorded. But what he does is uh, loaded with meaning, and that is he always obeys what God wants him to do, and he never puts it off. So, so Joseph had to be a man of deep prayer. You can't be that way unless you're a person, a man or woman of deep prayer. And this is possible for anybody. I don't care if you're in grade five or grade seven, you can be taught to pray. So one of the best things your parents will ever teach you to do is to pray, not just to say your prayers, but to pray. So one way we can cultivate this, I've kind of referred to, other than prayer, which is essential, is to closely moderate our sensory input that we subject ourselves to every day. In other words, do not listen to too much music, listen to the right kind of music, or watch too much TV and watch the right kind of TV, or watch too many YouTube videos, unless you're watching me and or myself and Deacon Richard. Then you can watch all the YouTube videos you want. <laughs> Only with your mom's and dad's permission though, but you gotta be watching our YouTube videos. So, and lots of good things to come in the future. Uh, <clears throat> in the not too distant future, actually, this in the coming weeks and, and the months over the summer. So today we celebrate St. Bernardine of Siena. This was a wonderful, oh, all the saints are wonderful. It's kind of, every one of them is wonderful, but he's wonderful in, in a number of ways. Uh, he was an Italian priest. He lived between 1380 and 1444, so a long time ago. And he was known for his preaching and popularity with ordinary people. As a young man, he cared for, and this had a tremendous influence on him. As a young man, he cared for an el elderly woman on her deathbed. She constantly pronounced the name of Jesus in a prayerful way, because you can do that in a bad way, you know. But she did this in a prayerful way with great devotion. And it really affected him. It profoundly affected him. See how one person, which I'll mention in a second, how one person can affect another person, and in this case affect a priest who affected thousands and even millions of people. Is that one woman on her deathbed. <clears throat> so uh, he decided to make the name of Jesus the theme of his own life. So when uh, Siena was struck by a plague, isn't it interesting how many of the saints lived in times of plagues? COVID-19. Bernard, Bernardine nursed the sick until he himself became ill. After recovering, he became a Franciscan monk and was ordained a priest in 1404. Bernardine spent a dozen years in solitude and prayer. Talk about silence. Uh, the, and of course, in those days, you know, the young, I'm saying this more for the students, no TV, nothing, no newspapers, you know, uh, but still the people even in those days could have a lot of stuff coming into their heads, just a different kind of stuff, you know, lots of conversation and gossip and stuff. So solitude and prayer for a dozen years, 12 years, and was then sent forth as a preacher. For many years, he traveled on foot throughout Italy sometimes preaching to crowds as much as 30,000 people. That's, that's a lot of people in one gathering. Accomplishing all this with a weak and hoarse voice. Imagine, no microphones, no projection uh, devices, just his own voice and it was hoarse, like, could hardly speak, you know, it was very tough. Uh, though according to a legend, 
Uh, it later miraculously improved because of his devotion to the Blessed Mother. Now this is the, uh, one of the many interesting things about Bernardine of Siena. He was especially known to his devotion to the holy name of Jesus. That's not the point. Is that he devised the symbol IHS, which some people who don't know Latin or never read about this uh, think that means in his service. No, doesn't mean in his service. It means it's the name of Jesus. Uh, it's the three letters in the name of the name of Jesus in Greek. That's what it means. I A S to represent uh, to represent this. So, as this devotion spread, the symbol became uh, began to replace the superstitious signs and symbols of the day. So when a man now this is also very interesting uh, how this Bernardine was he was a smart fellow, uh, devoted devo devoted but he was also a wise fellow. So when a manufacturer of playing cards complained that the saints preaching against gambling was depriving him of his livelihood, Bernardine did not condemn this guy. He said, why don't you start making medallions with the name, uh, with the symbol IHS? So the guy took his advice, ended up making more money than ever. People of all, over the, all over Europe wanted these, wanted these medallions uh, about the name of Jesus. So this, to me, this is a very smart saint, a very uh, ingenious, uh, industrious. So he, he takes what could have been a war between him and this guy, and maybe the guy would have been out of money, you know. Uh, so the guy wants to make money. Bernardine kind of brings him along the right path. So some of Bernardine's teachings were criticized, and three attempts were made to have the Pope discipline him. But the saint's obvious faith and holiness overcame all opposition. So, so a couple of lessons from St. Uh, Bernardine is um, St. Paul states, God bestowed upon Jesus the name that is above every other name. As St. Bernardine realized, honoring the holy name of Jesus is the sign of a true Christian. So, you know, sometimes this name is used, loosely used, irreverently used, and used in sinful ways. People get angry and they say, you know, and, you know, even young people, sometimes we, they pick up the horrible habits of us adults. It's a horrible habit. That's where they learn it from, us adults. And we need to teach them to love the name of Jesus. And if we adults use it pro improperly, immediately repent. Tell Jesus you're sorry and help him to help, ask him to help you change this horrible bad habit, uh, using the holy name improperly. We, we don't sometimes even pay attention to what we're saying. Um, so, and God, the second, so that's the first lesson, is cultivate a, a reverence and a love and a devotion to the holy name of Jesus. And in your heart, even bend your knee, in your heart, you don't have to do it physically, but in your heart, bend your knee at the holy name of Jesus. That's what St. Paul teaches us is, will happen uh, in his letter to the Philippians. Every knee will bend at the, at the name of Jesus. And secondly, God will provide for those who, even at financial cost of themselves, seek to do what is right. Like this, this, um, this fellow, you know, who was selling these things. And uh, so he, he changes what he's selling and hopefully it led to a conversion in his own life. We don't know that for sure. He was making money, but hopefully he was thinking about what he was doing. So those who seek what is right, St. Bernardine helped the maker of gambling equipment find a better and holier way to make a living.
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, the River Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave the priest in Bernardine of Siena a great love for the holy name of Jesus, grant through his merits and prayers that we may ever be set aflame with the spirit of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul's escort took him as far as Athens and went back with instructions for Silas and Timothy to rejoin Paul as soon as they could. So Paul stood before the whole council of the Areopagus and made this speech. Men of Athens, I have seen for myself how extremely scrupulous you are in all religious matters because I noticed, as I strolled around admiring your sacred monuments, that you had an altar inscribed to an unknown God. Well, the God whom I proclaim is in fact the one whom you already worship without knowing it. Since the God who made the world and everything in it is himself Lord of heaven and earth, he does not make his home in shrines made by human hands nor is he dependent on anything that human hands can do for him, since he can never be in need of anything. On the contrary, it is he who gives everything, including life and breath, to everyone. From one single stock, he not only created the whole human race so that they could occupy the entire earth, but he decreed how long each nation should flourish and what the boundaries of its territory should be. And he did this so that all nations might seek the deity, and by feeling their way toward him, succeed in finding him. Yet in fact he is not far from any of us, since it is in him that we live and move and exist, as indeed some of your own writers have said, we are all his children. Since we are the children of God, we have no excuse for thinking that the deity looks anything <clears throat> looks like anything in gold, silver, or stone that has been carved and designed by a man. God overlooked that sort of thing when men were ignorant, but now he is telling everyone everywhere that they must repent, because he has fixed a day when the whole world will be judged, and judged in righteousness, and he has appointed a man to be the judge. And God has publicly proved this by raising this man from the dead. At this mention of rising from the dead, some of them burst out laughing. Others said, We would like to hear you talk about this again. After that, Paul left them, but there were some who attached themselves to him and became believers. Among them, Dionysius the Areopagite, and a woman called Damaris, and others beside. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Your glory fills heaven and earth. Your glory fills heaven and earth. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Your glory fills heaven and earth. Praise him, all earth's kings and peoples, earth's princes and rulers young men and maidens, old men together with children. 
Your glory fills heaven and earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he alone is exalted. The splendor of his name reaches beyond heaven and earth. Your glory fills heaven and earth. He exalts the strength of his people. He is the praise of all his saints, of the sons of Israel, of the people to whom he comes close. Alleluia. Your glory fills heaven and earth. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father will send you the Holy Spirit, says the Lord, to be with you forever. Alleluia. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time had come for him to pass from this world to the Father, Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but they would be too much for you now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth. Since he will not be speaking as for, from himself, but will say only what he has learned, and he will tell you of the things to come. He will glorify me, since all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said, all he tells you will be taken from what is mine. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is said that, I believe I have the right saint, Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque, who was uh, the recipient of revelations of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, in one of her uh, prayer times, one of the times she was praying, our Lord appeared to her, which he had done. Uh, he appeared to her a number of times. And they, I can't remember the specifics of their conversation, but uh, it, it came up about people's resistance, you know, to conversion or to what Jesus wanted them to do. And I can't remember if it related to other sisters in the convent or if it was just in general, uh, people's hearts. Probably, I think it was in general, general sort of analysis of people's resistance to what Jesus wanted them to do. And our Lord responded with, and this is really the point, I was willing, but men were not. So men here, of course, it's an inclusive term. I was willing, but men and women were not. I want, I, want, I want to give them a lot. I want to give them so much, but they won't receive it. They won't pay attention. They, you know, uh, and if you go back even to the early times in the Bible with the Jewish people in the desert, this was classic all the time. But it's not just them, it's um, you know, tied in with us as well. Jesus wants to do so much for us but we won't let him. We think, you know, maybe we do let him, but he wants to do so much for us, but he won't, we won't let him. How telling is this? And our Lord would have said this, not so much with anger, but with the sadness in his heart. Even his sacred heart, you know, from heaven, is, in some mysterious way, he would have been saddened by his children, resisting all the things he want, wanted to do for them. <clears throat> God wants to shower us, to literally drench us. You know, think about <laughs> If it's really pouring outside and you went outside and you had no umbrella, you got drenched. That's what God wants to do with his graces for us. We can't see that, but we, we experience it in all sorts of ways. He wants to drench us with his grace, with his goodness, and all sorts of spiritual, and perhaps even some material gifts. Remember me just uh, talking about this fellow who listened to Bernardine of Siena. He got rid of, he had to get rid of his gambling cards because Bernardine was basically leading people in the right direction. This guy, what he was doing was 
helping them do bad things, gambling, you know, and, and wasting a lot of their money and hurting their family life, hurting their personal financial life. It's not that all gambling is sinful per se, but, you know, it can very easily become an addiction. So what does this guy do? He listens to this saint. He could have resisted him and just made war with him. He listens to the saint, he does something good, and God blesses him for it. Uh, and he made even more money, uh, history says, than he would have made doing his sinful stuff. Now he was doing something good. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily or automatically he was converted. Hopefully he was. Because you can do good things and still go the wrong way. Uh, just because you're financially smart. So we want to be doing good things and going the right way, having a conversion of heart. So God even wants to give us material blessings. <clears throat> but because we put up obstacles, we have defective intentions, and God knows if we would use them for selfish reasons or for our own self-aggrandizement. Now, you grade sevens, you go and look that up. That's a big word, aggrandizement. You should learn a few big words just because it expands your vocabulary and it's good to, well, you don't want to impress other people, but it will if you know what it means. Don't just use it and you don't know what it means. Aggrandizement, you know, self-aggrandizement. Well, God knows if we're going to do it for these reasons, you know, basically to, for our own, puff up our own image. And so maybe we receive the gifts. Remember, Judas was called by Jesus, by God's own son. Judas was called by God's own son. And yet, we know what happened to him. He did not use his gifts well. He could have been a great saint, probably maybe even greater than St. Peter, because he did the worst thing. He just didn't deny Jesus, he, he was a traitor. He turned on Jesus, he could have been a great saint. And Jesus would have taken him back just like that if Judas had repented. So, and yet they will in effect go against us if we don't use them properly. It would be like good things that will burn in our hands. Uh, <clears throat> or we will pray for these gifts or just work hard for them and strive to use them for God's glory <clears throat> and they will help us and so many others get closer to God. A good example of this, well, today we celebrate St. Bernardine of Siena and I've mentioned a few things already about him, but St. John Paul II was somebody like this. He worked very hard in his studies. He worked very hard in his studies. He was a genius. No question, just intellectually speaking, the man was a genius, but he worked very hard. He, some people are naturally talented and they don't work hard. And I think that's a disgrace. Uh, if they're talented and they're geniuses, they need to work hard, you know, to make themselves even better because it's not about them, it's about what they can do for God and others. So St. John Paul II worked very hard at his studies. He learned many languages. He was polyglot, go look that up too. He was a polyglot, he spoke so many languages. Well, that just doesn't, God just doesn't pour that into our head. He had to learn those things. So he, he worked very hard for that. And he did have a natural facility. Some people just learn languages better than others. Uh, but still he had to work very hard at it. And he went on and God raised him up, not only to be a Pope, but a great Pope. Somebody, he could have been a mediocre Pope, but John Paul II worked very hard for God. And, uh, and for his people. He loved God's people. So he became not just a pope, a mediocre pope, but a great pope. And that's because he, he wanted to always say yes to what Jesus wanted him to do. So Jesus says in the gospel today, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will give you all the truth. He will guide you to all the truth. So the apostles were not ready at this point. <clears throat> And we are often not ready to receive the many good things that Jesus wants to give us. Why? Well, a lot of it has to do with our resistance, our going against what Jesus wants us to do. Or to put it another way, <clears throat> because we resist the many opportunities to pick up our cross throughout the day and follow him. And Jesus said we need to do this every single day. Now, maybe it's our awareness that we need to pray more and we do not do anything about it. We know we need to study, and we choose to play games. Instead, uh, or, we, we, uh, or if we uh, do our homework, we do not put our best effort into it. And we know we're not putting our best effort into it. Usually people know, you're not stupid. You're smart people, I'm talking particularly to the students. You're smart enough to know when you put your best effort into it. You're not dumb. 
<clears throat> so we, but grown-ups know too. I could have done it a little better. You know, I could have worked a little harder, more focused. We know that. Now you can't, you know, beat yourself up, but we have to make some resolutions to try and do better. And so everyone suffers from distractions. So we need to try to fight them off. Grown-ups do, you do as students. <clears throat> we can't just throw our machines away. Our machines can be used for great good or they can be used for great harm. We know we need to make a relationship right, another example, or at least try to and we put it off. We avoid it. We won't do it. We should go to the doctor, another example, for an appointment and we don't do it. And sometimes people die because of this. Or they, their health gets much worse because they won't go to the doctor, they have doctor phobia or whatever. <clears throat> we know we need to go to bed earlier so as to get up on time and go to church, go to Mass, give God you know, his, uh, to give God the worship that he is owed. And we won't do it. We go to bed late, we get up, oh, I'm so tired in the morning, I don't want to go to church. Well, I'll go to bed earlier. But you'll get up and do what you want to do, or, you know, this is, this is what we're like sometimes. And so when we're like this, we don't receive all the good things God wants to give us, all the good things Jesus wants to give us. So some of this is due to not knowing how, but underneath a lot of this is no. No, that's a lot of it. Underneath all of it is the word no. You see, if you really, really want money, you will work very hard for it. You work very hard for it. If you really, really want to have fun and then and you have work to do, you will get your work done so you can have that fun. Point being is we usually work for what we want to do and what... Uh, what we want to do, but not always for what we should do and what God wants us to do and what Jesus wants us to do. So Jesus calls us today to prepare for the descent of the Holy Spirit so that we will have another divine helper who wants to give us so many of God's good things. We have to allow this to happen. We have to take away the blocks that prevent the Holy Spirit from working in our lives. So resolve today, make a resolution, like an intention, with the help of St. Joseph, to never resist Jesus. Lord, I don't want to ever resist you in my day. It won't be easy. It's going to be sometimes very difficult, but it'll always be worth it. He promises that, but I promise that as well.
shall be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, for his right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Bernardine of Siena, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
I will pasture my sheep, I myself will give them rest, says the Lord. Alleluia. Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed Bernadine never ceased to labor, and for which he spent his whole life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power.